it's not an ingredient on the sides of the packages. They'll list the high fructose corn syrup, they'll list the mono and diglycerides, but they won't list the oil. And the food doesn't taste like oil. <laughs> My name is Michael Pollan. I am a journalist, uh, and in the last couple of years I've been specializing on, uh, in food and agriculture. I've written two books on the subject, and I teach uh, journalism at uh, UC Berkeley. The way we feed ourselves, which includes growing food, processing it, distributing it, uh, consumes about a fifth of the fossil fuel we use in this country. Uh, and is responsible for as much as a third of the greenhouse gases that are produced. So it's a much bigger part of the problem than people generally realize. And your eating decisions have as big an impact on the environment, on, on energy, as what kind of car you drive, uh, how you heat your house, uh, any of the other you know things you do, and, and, but we're not aware of it. We, we, you know, you know, you go to the gas station and you fill up your tank with gas, and you know you're using gas. But when you're buying food, you don't realize that oil is a very important ingredient in that food, especially when you eat from the industrial food chain. Used to be there was only one way to feed yourself. When I was a kid, you went through the doors of that church of the supermarket, and that was the only way to to feed yourself. But now you have farmers markets, now you have organic food, now you have pasture-raised meats and eggs and dairy. If you eat real food, um, which is to say food that is not processed, food that is made with ingredients that you recognize, food that is cooked by human beings, food that you know you can you, you know where it comes from, um, this will have a profound effect on the environment and on your health. You will cook more healthily than any corporation will ever cook for you. They tend to have a really heavy hand with the salt, fat, and sugar. Even poor people who cook have healthier diets than rich people who don't. Uh, so it even defeats the usual class relation uh, around food and health. People tend to go to the all or nothing perspective on things very quickly. We need to learn how to exist with a certain amount of ambiguities and that they're not really simple answers like eat everything local, eat everything organic. Growing pork in California, is that a good idea from a sustainability point of view? Everybody likes the idea of local pork, but you could argue that since pigs generally eat a lot of corn, maybe Iowa's a better place to grow pork, and then you ship the pork to California, because if it takes five pounds of corn to grow one pound of pork, it's cheaper to move the pound of pork than the five pounds of corn to the pig in California. So I, I, you know, I think we have to be smart and flexible about this. You have to look at the whole life cycle of these products, look at the carbon footprint, and decide what makes most sense. Collective action is important. Um, you could go meatless every Monday, but the real impact happens when everybody does. This is how political change happens. You know, one person um, acts as if their decisions will change the world. And then that idea infects another person, and another person, and another person. <laughs> Buy food from a shorter food chain. Cook it yourself. You will be reducing your, your carbon footprint and at the same time feeding yourself better.